You know, when something is really sacred, it's best communicated with a whisper. Not everybody should hear it. Think of something which is maybe the most profound, the holiest, the most sacred, like the relationship between man and wife. And even in the best situations, you have a lover's quarrel. It's a terrible thing, but it happens. And let's say the husband feels he has to leave. And then when he comes back and he feels that he's being welcomed into his home, imagine the tremendous joy. But it's not for everybody. It's very, very quiet, this level of joy. So we come to the book of Leviticus now. It's really the center of the Torah. It's the heart of everything. And you know what? We just don't know what to do with it. It's just stuck. It's got nothing to do with anything today. It is not in practice. The laws relating to the service of the Kohanim in the Holy Temple, in fact, our sages refer to Vayikra Leviticus as Torat Kohanim, the Torah of the Kohanim. And it's all about how we interact with God in the Holy Temple. And the whole book of Leviticus begins with a whisper. We read, He called to Moshe. It's a very strange verse. It doesn't say who. Vayikra el Moshe. He called to Moshe, and Hashem spoke to him from the tent of meeting. It begins with this, this whisper. And here we are confronting Sefer Vayikra. And we live in a world of total confusion. Everything is topsy-turvy. Everything is absolutely backwards. And our priorities are askew. And everybody's always talking about rights. And everybody has rights, <clears throat> human rights, citizens' rights, women's rights, children's rights, states' rights, uh, the rights of the accused, animal rights. Everybody has rights. The truth is, the book of Leviticus is the book of God's rights. What about God? Maybe he also has his rights. And you know, when you think about what happened back in the Garden of Eden, because everything is leading up until, until this point now, you know, the whole purpose of creation, the whole story, how it all unfolds, the saga of man from the very beginning. So back in Gan Eden, Adam HaRishon, the first man, he did what he did, Adam and Chava, and the way that we look at it is that Adam was banished from the Garden of Eden. But you know, everything is about the perception of reality. And actually, the opposite is also true. It was actually God who was thrown out from this world because Adam was essentially saying, I don't need you here. I know best, I'll do it my way. And that's how things continued until the children of Israel erected the tabernacle. And now the lover's quarrel is over. And the reconciliation is beginning with a whisper. And now God is so happy because we're letting him back in. And that is something that is so sacred and so profound. He called to Moshe. What did he say exactly? Something about that voice our sages tell us. That voice emanated, but only Moshe could hear it. And it only could be heard in the tent of meeting. It was only for Moshe. But yet this is the voice of Hashem in Psalms 29. The verses tell us that the voice of Hashem is with strength. It's with majesty. It breaks the cedars. But yet no one could hear that voice but Moshe emanating from between the Kruvim in the tent of meeting. And what was that voice saying? Now that we have this incredible opportunity, this reconciliation, of course it begins with a whisper. We wouldn't expect anything else for a relationship so profound and for a second chance now, a second honeymoon. 
And now, again, the bride and groom, as it were, are setting up house. And the tabernacle is the tikkun for everything that happened in the Garden of Eden. And now it's a chance to keep everything straight in this world because there was that mixed up confusion back in the Garden of Eden as far as priorities. And Adam saying, in moments of temporary insanity, I don't really want you here. It took a while, but now we're back here. Tabernacle is up, come to the center of the Torah. And in the midst of this world of tremendous confusion, God says, I also have rights. But my rights, he says, are actually about you. It's about our relationship. It's about how you can validate creation, how you can keep up the relationship, how you can demonstrate that it was a very, very good idea after all to bring forth the whole world. And the message of that voice, Hashem called out to Moshe. It's so high that it had to start out as a whisper because some things are so sacred that they have to be <clears throat> kept quiet. And one has to be able to hear it. But what was it? What was that voice? So we begin reading. He called to Moshe. It's all very hidden. And there's nothing recorded about that voice. But then, and Hashem spoke to him. So now we have the words taking form from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, Adam, when a man among you brings an offering to Hashem from animals, from the cattle or from the flock, shall you bring your offering. Look at the world we live in, so many rights. Even the animals have rights. Everybody has rights. And all of these rights obscure, cloud totally, the Creator's rights to be in this world and to have man in a situation wherein <coughs> creation is imbued with something sacred and something profound. And so the voice was, the whisper was, Adam, when a man among you shall bring me an offering, <clears throat> why is it that everyone has so many issues with this topic of the Torah. Why is it that we simply don't know what to do with Leviticus? Why is it that people have so many opinions? I think it's outdated, one will say. I think it's primitive. I think it's barbaric. I think this can't be serious. I think that we've evolved from that. Why is it? Because herein lies the difference between Adam and Behemoth. Herein lies the awesome sacred responsibility. It's so high, who would believe it even? It's so overwhelming that it has to be whispered. Are you a man or not? Because the whole reason that I put you into this world, God says, is to prove that humanity was created in my image. The whole reason that you're here is in order to use everything that I gave you, everything that I created, for you to come closer to me. And it's so overwhelming to know that man is at the center of the universe. Man is at the center of creation. And everything is not equal. And the rights are not evenly distributed. Because we are called Adam. And God says to me, when a man amongst you will bring me an offering and take responsibility and rise to the occasion and be able to internalize this truth that you are different, that your job is to be the steward of this world, to make sure that my presence is always shining forth from this place, to make sure that all humanity knows the difference between man and animal. That's why the Book of Leviticus is the center of the Torah. That's why it begins with a whisper. Because this is the entire purpose of man, to bring the relationship back, to fix what happened in the Garden of Eden, to stop the mixed up confusion and to make this statement through everything that's going on 
in the Holy Temple that the creation of man is a noble, lofty goal which we can validate by making this separation, by showing that we are not animals, that we're no longer confused, that we realize what our task is, that we realize what our calling and our goal is, and unabashedly to be able to peel off all of the, the false impressions that so confuse the divine image and that so tarnish the image of man and be able to make this distinction and bring the offering to God accompanied with a sincere thought of repentance, of a desire to be closer, of a desire not to be part of the, of the maw, the, the whole pool of life, just the whole biological kingdom of animals, but to make the sweet savor to Hashem through the subjugation of the animal soul and the refinement and the ascent of the, the manly soul, the man amongst you that was created in the divine image. Sunday, March 25th, 2012. It's the third annual International Temple Mount Awareness Day.